Hi and welcome to the Food Bug Pod YouTube channel. This episode we are sharing parts of episode four, the pizza episode. So in this episode we are talking to Scott Dealey, author of the Uni Pizza Project book and absolute pizza magician. So do tune in to the actual podcast to hear all of his top tips, hear his background. He's got some great information for you. And then here, you can see when we were making pizzas together. So you can actually see the actions that he uses with the dough, see them being cooked, see them in his oven. Absolutely brilliant. It was a great episode, a great episode to record, a great episode to taste. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Please do listen to the podcast for all of the initial interview. Come here to watch the videos of us making the pizzas. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And um, I really hope that you enjoy it. So it's me, Elaine, from the Food Bod Pod. Let's uh, go over to me and Scott in his living room and let's talk about pizzas. Scott, so what pizza are you going to make for us first? So the first one we're going to be making is my courgette bianca that we spoke about earlier with the fresh mint, lemon and chilli. Okay, so I can see that you've got pizza dough ready to go. Yeah, we've got it right? here. So we are now uh, talking on Sunday morning. Yeah. When did you make the dough? So this, I made the dough on Thursday night. So that's when I mixed it and it started its bulk ferment overnight. So about, I think it was about 14 hours at room temperature. Then I balled up the dough into individual balls. Could I just ask you, do um, I got a bit of dropout from um, one of your mics? I think there's a loose connection here. Um, could you um, just pick it up on? Uh, I made the dough on Thursday night. Yep. You can take it from there. Okay, thanks. Thank so yeah, I made the dough on Thursday night, um, and then it went away for bulk proving overnight until. Friday morning at room temperature, so that was about 14 hours, I think, in total. And I boiled up the dough into its individual containers, and then I leave it for an hour just to give it a bit of a head start, and then it went into the fridge until this morning, about 8 o'clock this morning. So, it so this dough has been in the fridge since? Friday morning. Since Friday morning? Yeah. Okay, cool. And it's... It's at the same point as you left it, or does your dough grow in the fridge still? It's, it grows in the fridge slightly, okay. but the main growth of this has been this morning, really. So it needs a few hours. You can't use dough cold, so it needs to be room temperature. Okay. So I took it out, I think it was about 8, eight o'clock this morning. So it's had a good few hours, so it should be nice and relaxed. <laughs> um, so is that your typical time scale for making dough? Uh, it depends really. Um, I've kind of like, now I'm a bit more advanced in my dough making, I kind of like make my dough routine fit what I need it to fit. Whereas yeah. when I first started out, our, our lives were very dictated. <laughs> like the uh, time I, I need to be home now to yeah. make the dough. So I, uh, what what my, my, my standard go-to was always 24 hours room temperature and that was it. Right. Then I, I slowly started incorporating a bit of fridge time with it just to slow it down. And what I find, the, the longer you leave it, um, basically the more relaxed it, it will be and it will be easier to stretch. This should be super relaxed because it's been in for so long and it's had a good few hours today. So... So what you're doing then is what I always recommend people do is you're making the dough fit your life yeah. rather than your life fit yeah. your dough. Yeah. So in the same way, your pizzas and your recipes can be organised for people to fit them around their lifestyles, their home lives. Yeah. Okay. I think, I think what, what happens is, when you, like I say, when you've been doing it for a certain amount of time, you just you get a bit more confident, you know what you can and can't do, so that's when you can start making it fit however you want. Yeah, instead of when you first make dough yeah. and it's all right, I've got to do this now and I mean, everything has to revolve around it. It yeah. was, it was a pain because we were trying to make plans to do things as a family <laughs> and I was saying, no, well, no, I need to be home by this time. So yes, it, but yeah, we've all been there, I think uh, David's see. nodding, yeah, 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 okay. But yeah, so I, I, that, I, am, I am at that point now where I feel like I can do that. Okay. So yeah. So if this is 
This is enough dough for making a standard kind of medium sized pizza? Yeah, this, this will make a 12 okay. inch pizza. And okay. then this, this is 275 grams of dough, which right. I find works pretty much perfectly for a Neapolitan style okay. 12 inch. So you're going to turn the dough out onto a floured surface? Yeah, so I, use, I don't use flour at this stage, right. I use fine semolina yep. because I find it. One of, one of the biggest challenges, especially as a new pizza maker, is getting the pizza off the peel and into the oven without yes. it sticking. Yeah. So semolina almost acts like really fine ball bearings, mm -hmm. whereas flour is a bit, I find it a bit too fine. Yeah. So I've written, you don't need to use coarse semolina. You can do, but you, you have to be careful not to use too much of that because it will... It will burn like as soon okay. as it hits. So fine semolina or a mixture of flour and fine semolina, I think is a really good way to go. Okay, so I'm really interested in watching you do this because yeah. I, uh, when it comes to shaping pizzas, yeah. I think it's a real art actually getting them round. Well, that's that's one of the biggest challenges, and I th one of my big bits of advice is just take your time because it, it doesn't need to be a frantic rush. Right. There, there are elements of the process that you do need to be quick, like as soon as it's on the peel, it needs to go in the oven, because okay. that's when it's going to stick. But actually making making sure it's round, and what, what I always do, and I, I talk a lot about it in the book, is stop at certain points and reshape if you need to. So when it comes out of here, it, it won't be perfectly round, but what I'll do is I'll... I'll reshape it so it is round and then start pressing it out and if it's looking a bit irregular mm -hmm. just reshape it so it, it, it comes work. back to not being scared of the dough then yeah, yeah it's you, okay to do that and don't get yeah. wrong there's nothing wrong with a regular shaped pizza it tastes the same but i've always had a bit of ocd when it comes to like symmetry and no, like I the, get that. The, the way i top i'm very particular it needs to be Nice and evenly spread out. You won't find me just chucking stuff on. But that's why you have beautiful images in your. Yeah, room. and it's just, it's just the way I am. But it, and the, there's, and that's what I always say as well. That there's no right or wrong way of doing this. You do it how you. Yeah. If you're one of them people that, are lucky enough not to have OCD when it comes to putting toppings on a pizza, then great. You can, you do what suits you. And I think that's a big, a big thing that people need to realise. There is no right or wrong way there'll be a lot of people that tell you otherwise like you're doing that wrong but it it's not wrong it's just a different way of doing it so scott i, I just have to say to you that last night my i called my pizzas artisanal pizzas what he's saying is he's uh, they, not they weren't round, not round. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what you're saying it, you you it's exactly the same things i say to people all the time when people message me and say does my sourdough look right uh, there is no right or wrong. Yeah. There's yeah. just great bread. But, you know, what you were just saying, there's very much a bit of a sourdough police thing. And I'm yeah. told it's the same with pizza. You very know, much. you can't do that. They can't yeah. be done this way. But anyway, you won't go down that road. Yeah. So show us then. I'm, I okay. want to see how you do this. So Scott's got his dough already and his little carriers. Are these particular special dough? No, dough? it's just a round plastic um, okay, food that container. Use for the, so that the, you use for the one, one thing I always do is just before the dough goes in, so on Friday morning, I give it a quick white brown with a bit of oil. Okay, so, so that helps it, it come out. It, it should come out. It should come out <laughs> nice and easily now. So the first okay. first thing I do is just so we've got semolina, semolina on, on the board on the board on and more on top of the dough. Yeah, and I've just got a little um, bowl there of semolina. Just put a little bit on. Okay. So it just coats it, and again makes it come out nice and easy. And then you're just going to ease the. You dough just have to tease it out a little bit. Um, and just work your way around because, you, like I say, you don't want to affect. The shape too much you want it to come out as naturally as you can so okay you're trying to ease it out of the round yeah. container so it contain it stays with the round yeah so Ooh. you can see you can, yeah. you can see there straight away that's gone into an oblong shape but yeah. it doesn't matter so it's not too far off being no it's not and okay. then then we coat it again we need we need a lot we don't want any sticky bits okay so this is also to stop your fingers from sticking yeah. to it 
Okay. So at this point, this is where I reshape to make it circular. So Scott's just moving his hands around it okay. with so a circular just, motion. Basically, you, you plump it up a little bit as well, because it obviously it will flatten out. Yeah. But if you, if you start with a circular bit of dough, yeah. you're on, you, you start in the correct way though. Okay. That was a very useful helper, just moving the bowl <laughs> so you could see the dough. Thank you very much. So that, that's a good starting point there. So we've yeah. got a nice round dough, it's covered in flour. And one thing we need to remember is the the top of the dough in the container, that's that's what we want to be the top of the pizza when we when we top it. Right. So at the minute that is face down. Yeah, because you tipped it so out. I've so you need to turn it, it over. Yeah, so but to start with, you start you press it out using both your fingers or both Sex both your hands. Yeah. yeah. Or start with one, and what you're going to do, you're going to start in the middle, and you're going to push the air out to the edge yeah. until you've got about an inch, just okay. half an inch maybe, all the way around. So you're pushing into the middle, you're pushing, so you've got a flat yes, piece in the middle, you, so you're, you're pushing, pushing the, out. You're pushing the air into the crust. Right. So okay. that's where your nice, fluffy, airy crusts will come from. So you're just, just going round and round. You're just working your way round. Gosh, and it's keeping it really round. Yeah, because it, it, like I say, you, if you keep your eye on the shape. Are you seeing this, David? But this, this, this helps if, like I say, this this dough is really relaxed. Yeah. I, I know now that once I, once I take this off to shape it on my knuckles, I, it's not, it's not going to take any time at all to be the right size. Because that so you're going to lift this up? Yeah, so first off, I get to a point around about like that sort of size, which is what, I don't know, but seven or eight inches maybe. It's not even a dinner plate, yeah, a little no. bit smaller than a dinner and plate. And at this point is where I flip it over. So just carefully just flip it over. So you haven't lifted it too high, so you've been no. able to just flip it over. So at this point again, I always say reshape so it's circular. Okay, so we're a little bit egg-like so and now we're round again. We're just going to do it with our fingers like that, just so it's nice and round. <laughs> and then we start again. We do we do exactly what we did before. And you're just pushing it out And you're again. just pushing it out. Just so it's nice and even all the way round. Now you've got a nice board you're doing, so, but someone can do this on their kitchen counter. Yeah, see, no, normally I will do this outside in my shelter, either okay. on this board or I've got a worktop. A kitchen worktop out there, I'll do it on that. So, yeah, so Scott's got, Scott's got a very cool shelter that he's got his uh, uni oven in, and he does this outside. But for the fact that it's um, it's the UK and it's freezing yeah, cold, freezing. we're doing this inside initially before we take it outside to bake it. So, this, okay. is the, this is the point now where I'm going to lift it off and do the final stretch with, with my knuckles. So, I'm going to okay. use gravity. To, to do the work. So there's, Why there's, do you need to do it? Because to me right now that looks perfect. I would say it's perfectly round and I wouldn't want to touch it. So why yeah. do you need to do more with it? It's it's a bit thick. The, the right. base is a bit thick. So, so this is how you're going to thin it out. A bit. Yeah, so that, that size dough ball, if you made if you made that now, it would is no it would work, but it might be a bit gummy. Like right. it might be a bit okay. thick on the base. So what, what we're gonna do, and there's lots of different techniques, there's like a a Neapolitan slap where it looks really cool and professional where you kind of like do that yeah, and stretch it. it but I don't I've never really got on with that technique okay. again some people will say that's how you should do it because that's how the Neapolitans the, the do should, it please. but you, okay. again you do what you do what suits you and the, the way I'm going to show you now is I find it a lot easier and I just think it's a lot more okay. effective so at this point you also need to get rid of all this flour from underneath because we don't want too much flour on the base of the dough because it'll burn. Right. So what, what we do, I'm going to take it off, I'm going to shove the flour out of the way. You, you'll be left with a little bit, which is fine. Okay. And I'm going to pass it between my hands to get some excess off. Okay. And then that's when I'm going to quickly go into, they call it like the steering wheel method. So it's going to hang off my knuckles. Okay. Gravity is going to do the work. And I'm going to slowly turn it, well, not slowly, because I think I'm going to have to work quite quick and turn it round until I've got the right size and then lay it back down. Okay, okay people need to take into account that making Scott speak here. Wouldn't also, he wouldn't normally be taking all this time with the dough. No, so you go for it, it's fine. What do. So, so pick it up on, into your hand. that hand, get rid of the excess, 
and then pass it like this between, okay. you have between to be really the two careful. hands. So you and can then onto, oh. onto my knuckles, on the edge, not in the middle, and then literally. Wow. You need to watch the YouTube video to see him doing this. And then that's it, I think. Wow, look at that. That looks so thin, but you didn't break it. No. And well, it's all bubbly from the yeast. Yeah, so at this point that's as well. That's amazing. So I'm just going to lift it briefly so people can see. Look at that perfect round. <gasps> but you can see how little work that was. Like, yeah, grab, but also you kept it quite close. You didn't do the whole throw no, it up in the air thing. You kept it quite close to the because, surface. Because I can tell this is so relaxed. Because we've made you wait, so I apologise. <laughs> no, but this is how I like it. I okay. like it like this. Okay, yeah. brilliant. There's no need to... If, if I did pick it up too high, gravity would just drop it, and that's when you probably get to... get a hole in it. Yeah. But if, if your dough's a bit more not as relaxed, and it, and it does need more work, like I know we were talking about, David, before, when it's on your knuckles, rather than just turning it, if you ease it, so not letting gravity just pull it. If you if you ease, ease it, it to the side, if you yeah. ease it at the sides like that, and as you turn in, then what you're doing is stretching this area. The middle. Rather no, rather than the middle. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you because the, the it's so easy to when you stretch in the middle section. Will get really thin. Will get really thin, and that will lead to problems when it's in the oven. It could tear when, okay. when you turn it. So, but Scott, one of the things I I, I find whenever I make pizza is that um, it it I don't get it. Uh, my, my my pizza bases never end up the right shape, and they never end up perfectly round, and they never end up that large. And it's because I think the dough is tearing, and I'm forever sort of repairing it, pinching it back together again. So, what am I doing wrong? Is that because my i'm not resting it enough or i'm not initially mixing it well enough so that because now i use a kitchenaid mixer not uh, not needing it am i just not giving it enough time in the mixer it could be a combination of well the, it, if it's when you're stretching it if it's kind of like pulling back into its original shape that that could be probably one of two things you could have over mixed it so the dough is really tight, um, or it just needs more time relaxing. So when it's in in the balls, because it's quite cold now in the UK as well. Like what? So I I didn't put mine in the fridge at all. No, I, so yours, it's just room temperature. Yeah, and I think it needed longer. Yeah, and also during the initial uh, mixing and kneading, I incorporate quite a few rest periods. So whether it's an initial 20 minute rest after I've just mixed the, the ingredients roughly and then once I, once it's mixed and it's, it's getting a bit smoother I'll leave it give it another 10 15 minutes covered and it just it just relaxes the gluten in the dough and what by the more relaxing will will end up with a lot more softer dough but so what I'd, I'd probably start by just leaving it in your boiled dough for maybe another hour or two than what you did previously and then go from there. So don't don't be so impatient basically. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, think of think of your sourdough training here. You exactly. Give, give yeah. it more time. And use your um use a thermometer to check the temperature yeah, of the dough. Sure. Because if, yeah. if it was too cold when you finish mixing it, then it's gonna be quite tight. Yeah. So yeah. It, it it's it's difficult to answer because there's so many variables yeah. but Relaxing is probably the main one that people okay. need to do more of. Pizza again okay. tomorrow night then. Yeah. <laughs> so we've so got our pizza base. At this point, one before, the last thing I do before I um, start adding the toppings is just go around with my hand on the inside of the crust and just gently press okay. all the way around. And what, what this it does, more defined. yeah, it just it just gives you crust a bit of a head start, okay. so you'll get a nice a nice rise out That's of your crust. So even, it's, it's almost like you've done this a few times. <laughs> and then, if I, I don't think I have, but if you've got if you notice any larger air bubbles within the crust, but I've got one there, you, you, you just, just pinch just, them out, just pop them. Okay. Because if you don't, as soon as they go into the high heat, they're just going to blow up yeah and they're just they're gonna like burn and they probably set on fire as well so okay. so right i'm gonna start topping now because i'm just 
conscious at all. It just sticks to the board. So yeah, we have made you drag it the out. First, the first bit on this is mozzarella, and this is just fresh. Um, it's, it's classed as fior de lat, which is cow's milk mozzarella. It's just the the balls of mozzarella that comes in a bag of liquid yes. from okay. the supermarket. You can use stuff that is a bit drier, but I like. I like the flavour and texture that this gives. So I love these bowls. All the prep work is in these lovely stacked uni bowls. They're so yeah, cool. This is the uni stack. So you okay. can either use it for ingredients or dough balls. Like like I use that. You could have a stack of three dough balls. So, um, I've been I've been cleaning right. things out my kitchen, but I might need some of them. <laughs> um, okay. One one thing, if you are using these balls of liquid balls of mozzarella in the liquid, one thing that it's too moist to put straight on the dough. Okay. So what I do is chop it, rip it into bits or chop it into bits, put it on a couple of layers of kitchen roll. Ah, uh, that's what that was. Yeah. Okay, all right. A couple of layers of kitchen roll on top for at least an hour and then that will soak all the moisture out of it so it's, it's a bit dry. That makes more sense because when I've used yeah. it and I've done it straight from the bag, you end up with water yeah. running off it. Yeah, okay. and, it, and it will make it... I might, not, you see, yeah. that's a perfect tip. I wouldn't have known yeah. that one. Okay. And then I'm just going to scatter... The mozzarella. So, because this is a Bianca, a Bianco, because Bianca, yeah, Bianca, Bianca. Yeah. it's uh, there's no sauce going on this first. This is no. all cheese first. So, you, with with the Biancas, you do you do use more um, mozzarella than you would if it was like a red base, because um, okay. we don't. This is where you need it to be quite evenly spread, because you don't want too many large areas of raw dough, because that's gonna that's gonna burn, and we need to keep it weighted down as well okay because it's so hot if it's not weighted down as much you, you can get like an air pocket underneath and it will start to dome right. in the oven and okay. then, it, then it can burn what heat is an only oven uh it's for neapolitan it will be f between 400 and 450 it can go to 500 centigrade yeah Whoa. so i find that, that i find that a little bit hot Okay. So 430, 450 is probably optimum. Okay, and we're talking centigrade here as well, so yeah. that's really high. Yeah, it's about 900 Fahrenheit, I think. Okay. So this okay. is the um, ricotta. And you've already added, so I've added your lemon, lemon juice, juice and a bit of lemon zest. Okay, so it's made So what we're going to do, we're gonna, you have to be careful not to use too much of this because it, it's quite rich. So in, in all the, in the, little, gaps. in the gaps, just do small blobs of the ricotta. Like I said, we don't want too much. I can see your particular ways here. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but that's how you get even toppings. Well, isn't I, it? one thing I like about well, one thing I like about when I'm eating pizza is I want an even. I want a bit of everything. Yeah. On each mouthful. Whereas, but isn't that what a pizza is? It's like the entire meal in the yeah. single. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you can you can use ricotta as like almost like a a paste to spread on as any layer. Like underneath the mozzarella, yeah. you could because it's loose enough to be able to do that. Especially but, because you've added the lemon juice to it. Yeah, so yeah. It, it does make it quite loose. But I prefer I prefer it like this. I think it it dries out a little bit when it's on like a thin layer. Lovely. So the last thing we add before it goes in the oven is this. I thought we lost it. Then. This is your ribbons of so courgette. Yeah, so it's just courgette, and I've used just a normal vegetable peeler to to make nice thin ribbons. And okay. again, there's no set way with this and that you haven't soaked this in anything no, it's just raw courgette li literally just done it okay so kind of make it a bit pretty yeah okay you can. and you can put as much or a little on so what's going to happen with this is this pizza is going to go onto the peel and we're all going to very quickly follow scott outside to a shelter to get it into his oven um Normally he would be doing this next to the oven, so we wouldn't have this yeah. pressure on him. It's always better to be as close, <laughs> as close but, to the oven know, as you can. We're working with the weather here, at least it's not raining. Yeah, not um, either. But normally Scott would be having his big pizza oven outside, and this would be uh, all being done outside. Maybe of course we should have just found this ledge in the year, but there we go. Yeah, so you got like a nice um, even spread of, in of ingredients there. Look, it's like a picture. Okay. And then finally, just a quick drizzle of olive oil. oil. Okay. And what this does, olive oil actually sounds strange, but that actually prevents things from burning too much in the high heat. Okay, cool. So that's 
it's flavour as well, obviously. But, um, so you're now going to switch the peel underneath that, and I also want to see you do this yeah, well so because this, this is about this is when I would scrunch it up. So this is this can be difficult, especially with really relaxed loose dough. So I'm just going to a little bit of um, fine semolina. And we've got a metal. In. So this a is metal a, peel this is here. a perforated metal one, which I like okay. to use because what what you'll see I'll do is once it's on here, I'll. Um, I'll give it a quick shake and the perforations allow the excess flour, semolina flour to, to fall off. Okay. So you don't want much in the oven because it'll just burn. But if those are in the ovens are that hot, if you use a wooden one, you burn it, wouldn't you? Well, well you, you've got to be yeah, in and out it's, it's pretty quickly. Quick. It's really okay. quick. So, so okay. yeah, so what I do, I just lift the edge up yeah. um, and start like, the, the, again, there's different ways you can do this, but this is just the technique that I prefer. Now, I'm, I'm literally just going <laughs> to... Is that the starting <laughs> line, ready to go? <laughs> I'm going to lift it up, yeah. under, give it a shuffle, and, and then you reshape it circular again, Okay. and then we go. Right, so we're so lifting lift, the edge. So you just lift it up. Whoa! So it's a good couple of sharp Give it, Give it a quick shake, and you'll see the flour coming off. It's barely lost any shape though. Back down and then just a, a nice quick reshape. Okay. So you know you're on the right. So this is a 12 inch peel. So yeah, okay. So it's should be perfectly. Inch. 12 well, inch. Look, I mean, it fits it perfectly. It's done this before. So we're going to um, just grab our recording implements and uh, follow Scott outside. Okay, okay. so let's um, go. <laughs> There we go. So if you follow with that one, and you follow with that one, don't worry about this bit because we're just make sure you come over the step, and then we'll start to be a bit more concerned about what you get in the picture there. Yeah. Mind the steps. Up. Right. So we are now outside with Scott, and this is Scott's shelter. <laughs> Uni oven is on and ready to go. I'm so just going to pan alongside. We'll just have a quick check of the temperature before we go in. I've got okay. no doubt that it's going to be hot enough, but it's always good to check. So okay. that's running quite hot. That's 480. So right. probably a little bit hotter than I would normally. That's probably because we've made you have it on. It's just been long. it's just been on a bit longer. So okay, can you can you see? Can we see around him? Just okay. Around here, Lily. So we've got fabulous Lily being our camera lady today. So she's going to so this, show what this, Daddy's doing. This is quite a quick, quick movement we have to do. To so go a quick flick, shuffle it out. So our pizza. And then I is use this, the this turning peel. I'm so to turn this round. Now. If someone made me one um, during the summer, showing me this, you need to keep moving it because the yeah. heat is from the back. Well, it, you this, need this to keep is an L, it. This is an L shape flame, so we have to warm the peel up. That helps you slide it under initially. So just whack it in the flames. So you need to keep turning it because you've got an L shape yeah. of heat at the back, so, so we you need, need to, it to go around the back. So once it starts at the back, you can release it off. Wow. And how long do you think it took you to get that action right? Quite a long time. I wasn't that comfortable using a turning peel to start with, so I, I just used that. But again, it comes with confidence and experience. I can see the concentration. Watching you do this is brilliant. We've only got like 60 to 80 seconds. And then, That's what's and amazing. Then it's, then it's done. So, so we can already see that the edges are starting to brown and we're starting to bubble. Yeah. We're nearly there now already. It smells amazing. My stomach is rumbling. Look at that. Yeah, yeah the biggest advice is just not to take your eye off it because a few seconds can be the difference. Yeah, you so can't walk away, can you? No. If I left this for few more seconds it, it would probably be on fire. We've got Ronnie the dog in here with us as well, hoping you drop some. So that's done now. Wow. Wow, look at that. Can we see that? That's amazing. Okay, so we're taking okay. it back inside. Yeah, we'll a bit of finishing in. touches. Yeah. <laughs> back here inside yeah. with the pizza. So <gasps> what, we're amazing. Gonna, what we're going to add now is some chili flakes. Okay. I take it this is optional, but it yeah, nice yeah, extra. Yeah, everything's optional. Yeah. I'll just turn it so, and then just a nice even wow. coverage. 
and then some fresh, freshly chopped mint. Mint courgette, nice mix. Again, as little or as much as you want. And then finally, just a little bit of um, fresh Thank lemon you. zest, just to give it that. You don't need too much because obviously it's quite powerful lemon zest. So. This looks amazing, and with the extras you put on the top, the added colour. Well, that's what it's about as well. It's not just the, well for me. It's not just smell. about how it tastes. It's about how it looks. As that well, is so. amazing. That looks amazing. So yeah, that's you. That's our. There you go. Claudette, Bianca, <laughs> Peter. Yeah. Thank you very much. I tell you, we're going to dig into that. First of all, we need to take some decent pictures so everybody yep. can see. And then we'll move on to your others. But that was amazing. Yeah. I'm the really speed and yeah. efficiency is just brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah, so you are on a bit of a... on the clock. Lovely. Now that I've watched you make this, and my stomach is rumbling this much, and this is supposedly the one for me, I think yeah. I should get to try a bit, okay. don't you? And a perfect pizza cutter, of course. I actually normally use um, scissors. Scissors are the best, <laughs> are the best kitchen implement in the world. Well, it stops you um, flattening the crust. I use scissors for everything. My son yeah. looks at me like I'm nuts sometimes. Okay. Is this my there you piece? Go. Oh, look at that. David, watch and cry. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, wow. Mmm. Oh, that's lovely. Good. Oh, it's a really good mix. Just a couple of little bits of the chilli flakes and the lightness of the um, lemon juice. Oh, and I've got, look at the holy crust. Mmm. Well, all I can say is we'll be back. You're welcome. Nice. Mmm. <laughs> That's really nice. Thank you. Mmm. <laughs> Great. Great. I really need a machine now. Um, now that I have uh, cleared my mouth, um, and I haven't got a mouthful of food this time. I have to say the pizza was lovely. Good. So light, just like Lily said. So what pizza are you making this time? So this is a vodka sauce pepperoni. So, so this is something you've created recently, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, this is quite... I've only just started delving into the world of vodka sauce, which, I mean, I think it's used as a pasta sauce, okay. mainly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we I like it's it's just a really nice. It's quite a creamy um, texture and flavour because you add double cream into it. Again, there's a there's a I've got a recipe for this on my Instagram page. Okay, and the recipes for all of these people are going to be able to find on our website as well, so they'll okay. be able to yep. listen to the podcast, watch you in action on YouTube, find the recipes on the website. So let me leave you to carry okay. on with doing your dough, and whilst you're doing that, um. I have to say, I was very honoured you sent me an early copy of your book, which is just lovely, and the message you put, you see, this is one of the ones I really fancy, the perfect pear, because it's got thin slices of pear and blue cheese and walnuts. Oh, yeah, Dave and I are going, oh. Yeah, that's the, that's one of the Tom Miramana thin, I mean, and that's again, that's a Bianca, is it? Because it is. Yeah, there's, there's no sauce on that one. I mean, so. that, that actually, I don't understand why I didn't make that one for me to do. If well, blue, give, blue that cheese is a prior order. Blue cheese is a bit funny, isn't it? So, oh, it, yeah, I think it's it divides. Amazing. Right. And there's what I like as well is you've got the different shapes, you've got some of those ones with the edges. I, I don't know what you call it, you know, you're doing the square pan. Oh, the Detroit. Oh, the Detroit, yeah. So, you've got all the lingo. So there's an awful lot of choice in here and all of the toppings. It's just, I, I, I think it's brilliant. I'm so happy for you with this book. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. And it's because my wife, Nikki, did all the photography in it as well. Yeah, it's, it's um, brilliant. It was like a, it was, it's like a team effort and it was just nice to do something like that together. But this is also a very special copy. This is your own book for home, yeah. which you've dedicated to Nikki and Lily. Yeah, which is yeah, lovely. that's the one we've kept for. It's lovely. And we've also got some sweet pizzas at the end of this. If you're watching on the YouTube channel, you'll be able to see him doing that amazing thing with the pizzas with the dough again. Look at that, go nuts. 
This one's got um, chocolate hazelnut spread and hazelnuts over the top. Who says pizzas have to only be savoury? Right, so now that you've shaped your dough, yep. I'll stop looking at your book. So this one is going to be different because you're putting a sauce on it. I am, but again, I'm not this... The sauce goes on after the cheese on this one. Oh. Yeah, so this is slightly different. Okay. Um, you can you can use the vodka sauce after it's come out of the oven um, and drizzle it on, but but it would need to be warm. Okay. So for the you, it, you can use either or. It, it doesn't really matter. You'll obviously get a slightly different texture. But so this could also be a standard tomato sauce. It have to be the vodka yep. version. No, no. Okay. I, ju I just think the vodka sauce works really well with the pepperoni. I think they go, they go really and well. And what's your pairing. easy, quick, standard tomato sauce? Literally a tin of your know, good quality tomatoes, um, preferably plum tomatoes. Mm -hmm. um, a teaspoon of salt yeah. and some chopped up basil. Okay. And that's it. And what I do, I use an immersion blender just to give it two or three quick bursts. It, is, yeah. it doesn't need to be super smooth. You've got to be careful because the more the more you the more you blend it, the more oxygen you're getting into it, which can give it quite a it's like a almost like a fizzy taste. Yes. So you have to be careful not to do it. You can just use your hands. It depends how chunky you want your sauce, it's down to personal preference. Did you ever put olive oil in that? No, not okay. for my Neapolitan pizzas. It's literally just tomato, salt, and basil. That's Brilliant. it. it okay. I, I find there's no need to overcomplicate it with garlic or sugar or oil. I, I, I really don't think it needs it. I think okay. it overcomplicates it. So well, I don't want to put you off this okay. time. So you've so, got your base ready. Yeah, we've got base. round. And then we're going to go on with the, the mozzarella. mozzarella. Again. So the mozzarella is on first, very carefully being spread around. Should be just about right, that should. You've done some serious prep work for us today, thank you so much. Standard weekend. <laughs> Again, nice and evenly spread. And then I, I used the ricotta on this as well. Sorry, I ate yeah. some of that. I didn't I realise you were going to use it. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was at the point of I was just about to tell you to stop eating it, but I think you've left just, a, just enough. <laughs> Oops. But You'd yeah, invite yeah. me back, wouldn't you? Yeah, oh just... look, there's enough. I'm not eating this pizza because this is a meat and you know alcohol based one, so it's not my problem. <laughs> I mean this although we've only just started um, making this one. Um, this is one of my favourites, this is, I really like the... But don't you find though, I mean, I, 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 having written my books and, you know, and I've got my third one, you you make those recipes so long ago, Yeah. you've made them, you've edited them, you've prepped them, you've shared them, and your brain goes on to other things, and you start to make a whole new set of stuff. Yeah, see, I've made quite a lot of recipes since. Yeah, the I'm, I'm exactly the same. And I, I think, oh, I wish... I wish I'd have been able to include that in the book. But you also yeah. advance, I think. Yeah. You know, you learn more. Okay, so we've got the cheese on and now we've just... I know, actually, some... now, getting ahead of myself. So this is where Sorry, I'm I now go on the sauce. So with this, it's just, there's no meatness with this. It's just in random drizzles and dollops. Doesn't Being matter. that we are in a home here, this is why you can hear the pitter-patter of the dog, just like you can when we're in my kitchen. He's never far away when we're... Uh, We've got the, the dog patching around and we've got the cat just sitting a little way away from us, showing no interest whatsoever. She's not bothered. So we've got some dollops of sauce spread evenly over the top. And then... It's looking like a picture perfect. So then it's just um, on, on the, the pepperoni. pepperoni. So this is thinly sliced bits of pepperoni that seem to have come out in little heart shapes. In yeah, the so this is... This is um, the pepperoni that I use a lot, I use it's called properoni. Oh. Um, so it's just a really nice. So it it's quite it's a it's, it's a bit of a thinner yeah a thinner cut. I can than, see that. And I, I just think it suits pizza really well because it goes nice and crispy with it being nice and thin, and you get the curled gnarly like burnt edges as well. It's, so um, obviously your book is the Uni Pizza Project. Yeah. Um. Can people also use the same dough and the same processes in an oven? Yeah, yeah, there's no reason okay. why you can't. I would recommend 
getting a, a pizza stone or a piece of steel so it's, hot, you, enough. So it's hot enough the, okay. the hotter the better um, you, your finished pizza will it will look slightly different um, it won't be as soft it will be more of a, a crunchier texture but there's yeah there's nothing to say you can't use it in your home oven so okay so finally i'll just add the the olive oil and then we'll add basil after right on this one so we've got another drizzle of olive oil going over it onto the steel so you're going to put it onto the steel shape it again and then rip some basil over the top no the basil goes on when it's cooked oh on this, right on this one okay i just think it works i think it works nicer being raw than, okay. than cooked so yeah. we're onto the steel it's, it's, so it's real quick action isn't yeah, it yeah you have to be so it's quite a daunting part yeah. of the process that is because you worry about tearing it yeah so because um as i've said a couple of times because it is really cold here we're going to let scott take this yeah. one outside and cook it on his own and I've then bring it back minute. in perfectly done to save us all shifting outside all right i'll see you in a bit see you in a minute <laughs> Coming back in out of the cold with a perfectly cooked pizza. My word. This is fine, Margie. Look at that. That round. Uh, oh, the, I mean, I know I'm not going to eat it, but the smell. I have to say, the smell of pepperoni. It does smell. Nice, does yeah. smell absolutely stunning. Sorry, let me. Uh, what you'll <clears throat> what you'll see with the what they call it, like leoparding. Yes, the, the, on little the spots around the edges. So. Again, some people like that, some people don't, but that that comes from, I, I, I think, giving it the extra time in the fridge, um, giving it a longer proof, and then the ultra high heat in the oven, those two things combined. Will... But it's like the blisters that we often yeah. get on sourdough. I mean, this is the yeah. job that your, your yeast has done, yeah. giving it their bubbles, that's what's coming yeah. out. So what we'll do here, we'll just get some... Some fresh basil. Some fresh basil, and again with with this one, I like to be a bit um, scattered on approach. I so you're just ripping up some basil, yeah. throwing it across the top. And by ripping it, you get the obviously you get the smell. Yeah, again the aromas, and as it hits it as well, because it's hitting the heat, that's yeah, it's just bringing out the smell. The flavours just work really well together. I think all of them together just um, so amazing. Awesome. There we go. Yeah. Pizza number two. Number two. Fabulous. I'm going to ask you actually, whilst we're surrounded by it, um, obviously, you know, we work in partnership with Matthew Cutsworth Flower. And actually, that's one of the reasons we know each other. Yeah. Through uh, yeah. Matthew's events. And I had you at my event at Christmas. Yeah. Made you get up on the stage and talk to a room full of people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the flower that you've used in these days, is it this one? So it's the Matthew's Cutsworth yeah. Pizza Flower. Yeah. Okay. And why does that work particularly well? Um, I think for for how I prove the dough, um, I think the protein level of this flour, which I believe is about 12, 11 and a half, 12 percent. Um, yeah, 11 point eight. 11, yeah, so I, I think that's that that works really well for this style of pizza. Um, so I think if you're doing Either whether it's a 24 hour prove, I wouldn't push it any longer than I have done this time. Yeah. I think that would be my limit. That was a very with, long one. That was a long one for that level of uh, protein. I think if, if you're going to push it any longer, you would want a higher one. Um, but that being said, I think you don't need to go that long. I think yeah. whether it's 24 or 48 hours, th this works really well. And I think. With this one was a sixty three percent hydrated dough. Okay. Um, so what that means is that's a percentage of water in the dough compared to the flour. Yeah. So again, I think that's really well suited to this flour. So it works well. Hand yeah. In hand. I don't. I don't generally go higher than that. A. I don't. I don't personally like how. Uh, the, the crusts are in particular with with a, with a higher hydrated dough okay. i think the six low to mid 60s is personally that's how 
That's how I like it. It gives you a really nice, yeah, I can see that nice fluffy dough without too much air in there. Because what what you find if it's got too much air in there, it's just a hollow yeah. shell almost. And but what I like I texture? like a bit of texture in there. So so it's a good starting flower, you would say. Definitely, and it is the it's the flower I started with in lockdown. So oh, brilliant. when I first started, if you remember, flower was so difficult to get yes. hold of. Yes. Um, I think the first dough I made, I, I just used a supermarket flour and then I got a, like a, I found this, um, like a local person who was going, he had like a, like a deli type shop and he was going round in lockdown um, delivering um, groceries on, to doorsteps. So you'd place your order, pay him online and then he'd just drop it at your doorstep. Um, Brilliant. And he, he actually had Matthews Cotswolds, the Tipo 00 flower, uh, which is the other flower you can use. So Tipo flower? Yeah, so Tipo 00 is very similar to this flower, so it, it can be used as well. I've, I've just got a preference for this. I just think it gives slightly better results for this style of pizza. But so again, they're very similar, very similar protein content. So Really, I'm, we need to thank the entrepreneurial traveling deli man yeah. during lockdown for yeah. introducing you to such great flour definitely without that i wouldn't have it would have been a long time before i'd have got my hands on any proper pizza flour yeah. so yeah that was literally the only place i could get it i was just thinking actually as i was saying that so we have this nice connection now with our books and our publisher and we have the connection with the flowers yeah and we'll probably end up with a connection with big bellies eventually as well <laughs> and yeah. and as i can see flower everywhere we've got flour all yeah. over the place this probably shouldn't have worn black really well i never remember to wear an apron so i've usually got handprints right yeah. across the top of my thighs where i've written where I've, I've done my hands anyway we have this amazing pizza ready to go which i'm sure that david's going to want to have a try of um so we're going to try this one and then we're going to bring you on to another one of scott's recipes and what's the last thing you're going to make for us today so the last one it's not pizza but it's um <clears throat> some garlic and herb butter dough strips nice so it's like like dough balls but in strips basically so are we using the same dough then same dough exactly the same yeah no okay. difference in that um it's obviously just a bit different how we're going to prepare it we're just okay. going to flatten it out into like a an oval and then use a pizza cutter to cut it into, into strips. strips and then that's it so not Straight. as much not as much pressure on the shaping no, then no there's, there's no okay no there's no it's a lot different like, they, these are really easy and then what we do as soon as they come out of the oven uh, we put some melted garlic butter all over Whoa. them so it, it's all that is is just butter some uh, crushed garlic and some dry parsley nice so in, this is a recipe that's in your book. Yeah, this is in the book. So this is in the, there's a chapter called uh, something a bit different. So lots of different shapes, like star shapes. There's one like a, a tennis racket. Oh, uh, cool. A dog bone. Star shapes um, always works for me. Yeah, so. So let me put you off. This is in that section. Okay. And the book is out now in the UK. Yeah. It's already been out in the States earlier. So it's now out in the UK. We highly recommend it. So as a reminder, it's called The Uni Pizza Project by Scott Dealey, published by Page Street Publishing. So with this one, rather than flattening it out, flipping it over, what I do with this one is just flip it over straight away. Okay, so you've so got that, your, your the, dough, you've the turned out. Okay. And then it's just a very light, you do, we don't want it really thin. So it's so just, just, just a like a nice, hand, just yeah, it's just it. a nice, and we don't need to worry about making a crust. It all it all wants to be evenly. So all Scott's using is the flats of his hands just to push it out. Because you can see all these air bubbles yeah. now because the dough is super solid. And, and it's a bit of an oval and that's okay yeah. because we don't need a round. Yeah, we, we, we want this to be oval. Right. We, okay. Well, I say we want it. It can be any shape you want. It doesn't matter. But okay. I think this looks nicer as an oval when, when it comes together. So we're going to do the same again. Get to the excess flour. So pushing away all the semolina. Yeah, just a quick toss between our hands. Just flick it between the two hands. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to put that to one side for a second, and we're going to use, I'm going to cut it on straight on the wooden peel. Right. Um, because if you if you cut it up into strips and then transfer it onto a peel, 
it was quite fiddly. Yeah, um, yeah. Whereas, but using a wooden peel, it means you could cut. Obviously, with the perforated peel, you can't okay. you can't cut because of the perforations. So. Okay, so the metal peel that's got, got has got perforations in the bottom. So this is a straight wooden. So peel. this is just a bamboo a bamboo peel. So we're gonna like I did before, just a little bit of flour on there, and then we're gonna go on with the dough. Again, just reshape if you need to. I'm surrounded by, oh, it's the basil. I've got the basil in front of me, it smells amazing. Yeah, nice quick reshape if you need to. Okay. And then normally cut it into six or seven. So using a pizza just cutter. Just a normal pizza cutter. And slicing it into strips, what are they about? About an inch, inch, inch yeah. and a half, just, yeah. But again, they can be as, as wide or as, as thin as you want. And then that's it. So you can see. Okay, can so see it's just the there. breaded strips ready to yep. go. So that's going to go in the oven. That's then when it comes back out. Now. One thing I do do is just give it a sprinkle in before it goes in because the edges where you've cut are quite sticky. So just just having a tiny bit of the semolina will stick to it and it will stop them sticking together. So you're going to put that in the uni. Yeah. I take you can't really turn that if it strips. Yeah, so what I do is I'll, I'll, I'll launch it in. Once you see this area starting to brown and blister, I'll use this peel. To pick than all of it up in one go. So I'll go under it, it, bring it out the oven, pop it down, and literally use both my hands to just quickly turn them around 180 oh, degrees. Here we go, back in from the cold. Oh, look at that. There's our puffy strips. Yeah, so I've, I've just put them onto a, a steel plate. Um, okay. But yeah, you can see. Oh, the they've, smell. They've risen up really, yeah, so really well. Yeah, so really nice puffy strips. Yeah, they're just really dough. soft. And then what, okay. we'll, what we'll do, what we'll do, I'll do it there. And then this is the, the melted it, yeah. garlic butter. Okay. So this is just garlic. You said it's garlic. Crushed, crushed and garlic, of... butter, and dry parsley. You can okay. use any herb, but I think so parsley. So you've melted that briefly in the microwave, yep. and you're just going to spoon it over the top. And it's really important to get it on quickly. Once Whilst it's still hot. It yeah. makes a big difference. So then we're just going to drizzle on the top no. of the beach. Look at that. Wow. Obviously, yeah. we're not very healthy, but... Uh... <laughs> The smell, oh the smell. Yeah, these and are... I guess though it's drizzling down between it, you can just use the bread to wipe it all up off the plate yeah. after. These are something that we make a lot. Like we'll, I'll probably make us a couple of pizzas to share, you know, the three of us, and then we'll we'll do a portion of these as well just to just to go with it. These it's are good job you all live in the same house. <laughs> Yeah, Do you so like these, this as well, Lily? Is this one that you like? Yeah. These, are, nice. these are a firm favourite in this Look house. at that! Well, I mean, that just smells amazing. Yeah, it? it's, it's, they're, they're really simple, but they're, they're just... I mean, who doesn't like garlic, <sighs> butter and dough? Oh, my word. So if you don't like garlic, then yeah, probably... Well, you could. You don't have to use garlic. You well, you could, could use, just use it with the herb and butter. Yeah, herb to butter, yeah. yeah. Well, I you guess could add as well. chili, chili into it. And well, like, you could sprinkle a bit of parmesan on top of that yeah, if you wanted to. Yeah, again, it's like a canvas, isn't it? You but can, yeah, the fact can, is, once you've got the dough... The dough is your base, and then you, you can, do whatever you, you like. can do whatever you want. Then, yeah. Do you yeah. know what? I am going to bring this to a close yep. and just say thank you so much for having us in your home. Right. Thank you for sharing your tips, sharing your pizzas. I mean, I can see how much you've planned this and how much work you've put into this. The whole family has been putting work into this. Um, so thank you so much for having us. That's a right. pleasure. Thank you for... We've you learned for so it. much. We've got uh, full bellies. It's been a pleasure. Um, I'm, I can smell that from here. <laughs> it's got to be absolutely superb. So thank you so much indeed for, for all that you've shown us and, and cooked and described for us today. Um, it's certainly given me food for thought, to absolutely. use a cliche. Um, and uh, that's that, that's going to be marvellous. So thank you very much indeed yeah, for thank your you time for, and effort. Thank you. For and I, I'm, I have no doubt that people are going to just love this, love this episode. Pizza being so popular, um, and you know we hope that everybody that's listened has enjoyed it. We hope that you also watch it on YouTube and you can see just how busy Scott is. Then remember to go onto our website and find the recipes. 
Um, we've got, of course, even more fabulous stuff coming up, haven't we, David? So our next episode, our next edition, features the fabulous Sophie Rushton Smith. We'll be in her home kitchen, um, and uh, she's got some wonderful recipes and, and, and demonstrations for us, and a lovely story to tell as well. And tips. I mean, when we asked her about tips, probably like you, Scott, we asked her about tips and she said, oh, uh, I'm not too sure what I've got to share. And she started talking and making stuff in her kitchen and it just came out. It, was, did the um, tips just come and come and come? When we did your Christmas party, and we, yeah. me, Sophie and Anne were on stage. She did you the same share the stage with us? She did the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. She says, oh, I don't know if I've got anything. And then she just... So and, and but this wonderful. is the whole point of this podcast. You don't realise the value of the information that you've got. Yeah. And you don't realise the things that you do in your kitchen. And it is the little things. You know, you said earlier about because how you cook, you don't always have leftovers. But actually, when you talk about your pizza base and the fact that that can be a blank canvas, whatever you've got can be going on it. But anyway, I'm meant to be wrapping up, not talking more. Um, we do hope that you will come back and join us again. Uh, listen to our previous episodes, listen to our next episodes. Um, we are loving doing this and we hope that you're loving listening. And we must give a final big round of applause and a thank you to the very brilliant Lily, who's been a fabulous help today. Thank you for all your help, Lily. And a, a, our best helper yet, so thank you very, very much. And to Nikki as well. Yeah. Thank you all for having us. See you next time. Bye.